Google just launched four new updates for Gemini that make it way more useful. You can now do things like analyze videos, you can set a thinking budget, so you can control how long it actually thinks for, and you can even get it to double check its answers and so much more. So let's dive into this. Okay, now in order to actually access all these changes to Gemini, you need to access it through aistudio.google.com. And don't worry, this is literally 100% free. So the first thing that you're gonna be able to change is you are going to be able to enable thinking mode right here. So you can enable it or you can disable it. In addition to that, if you have thinking mode enabled, you can actually set a thinking budget. So something that I really hate about this sometimes is that it thinks for way too long, but guess what? I could actually lower the thinking budget and set it to be much lower. Or if I wanted to do think for way longer, let's say that I have a more complex issue or something that I want this to spend some extra time on, I could set the thinking budget to be way larger. As we could see right here, the normal thinking budget is at 8,000. So we could literally three X this, or we could set it to be much lower so that it thinks way quicker. Look at how much of a difference this makes. So here's how we're gonna show this off. We're gonna take this video right here about Steve Jobs on failure. Basically, it is him talking about failure. We're going to grab this URL right here. We're going to come over here and we are going to upload this. We're gonna upload this YouTube video right here. We're gonna put the URL in and we're gonna say, please analyze this video and give us his main points and what we can learn from it. Okay, so what I did here is I put this into compare mode. The reason that I put it into compare mode is because now we can come in here and we can actually change these things. So this one on the left right here, I'm going to have this set to be in thinking mode. This one in the right over here, I'm going to have this not set to be in thinking mode. We're gonna click run and then watch how different these two things actually interact. So if we see this one right here, this got straight into exactly answering the question, but this one over here took much longer. It thought for 10 seconds and then it went through and actually gave us a more thought out response. And as we could see here, this response is way longer over here. And if we wanted to, we could rerun it, we could edit it, or there are more options where we could delete it, we could copy the text, we could copy the markdown. So as you can see, just right off the bat, if you add thinking mode, you are going to get a way longer response, you're going to get a way more thought out response, and if you don't have thinking mode on, then essentially what's going to happen is it's just going to give you straight to the point response without any genius level thought. So. Next thing that I'm going to do, we're going to copy this again. We're going to open up a new chat over here. We're going to come back into compare mode. We're going to type this in. We're going to grab this video again, grab the URL, come over here. We are going to upload this YouTube video right here. Boom. And then what we are going to do is we're going to have them both set to thinking mode. But for this one, I'm going to set the budget to be 24,000. And for this one, I'm going to come over here and we are going to set it to be thinking mode. We're going to set the thinking budget to be 2,599. So what we're going to do now is click run and we're going to see that both of them are going to think, but one of them is going to think for way longer. So you could actually see how many tokens this has over here, how many tokens this has over here, and we could see that this one actually finished way quicker. Now I find that really interesting because originally what I thought was this thinking budget was going to determine how much it actually thought about something. But as we could see here, the higher the thinking budget over here, actually the quicker that it responded. In fact, it responded almost two seconds faster. Now let's see if there's really any difference here in the response. We have main points. We have lessons we can learn. Over here, we have main points, we have lessons we can learn. The only thing is though, with a higher thinking budget, this actually gave us a response way quicker. That was just the first feature. The second new feature is is grounded with Google search right here. Essentially what this is, is this allows Gemini to access Google search from this model over here. So if we come up here, we can see that the cutoff date right here is going to be January 2025. So this doesn't actually have up-to-date information, but the workaround for this is going to be using this right here. In fact, this is going to allow this model to double check its answers with Google search. So this is the prompt that we are going to test right here. What we're gonna do, we're gonna come back over to compare. We're gonna have flash preview right here. This will not have Google search on it. In fact, 
we're going to change this. This one will have Google search on. If we come over here, we are going to turn off grounding with Google search. We are going to type this prompt in, and now we're going to be able to see the difference between if it uses Google search or it doesn't use Google search. So this goes through and gives us different tariff updates as of April 5th, April 9th, and gives us a bunch of different updates here. Now, as we can see, this is all stuff that is after the knowledge cutoff date. And we can see all the different sources and see exactly what searches it did in order to actually get the answers here. But if we come over here to the right, what are we going to see? We're going to see that there is a bunch of stuff that is totally irrelevant. So if you're doing anything with Gemini, in Google AI Studio and you want to be able to use Flash Preview, but you want it to be able to double check its answers with search, you're going to want to make sure that you have this feature turned on. Now, before I get into the next two changes that are complete game changes, I need you to smash that subscribe button if you want to stay up to date on the latest and greatest AI tools. I upload videos like this every single day and you're not going to want to miss them. Now, the third update that we have before we get into what I think is the most important Gemini update and that really sets it apart from all the other LLMs is that if we come over here, you are going to see prompt gallery right here. And what this is going to do is show you how this actually likes to be prompt. For example, use Google search with Gemini for the latest weather. If we do this, this will actually go through and show us all the correct settings that Google recommends that we turn on in order to have something like this happen. On top of that, if we come over here, we will be able to see exactly what prompt Google would actually type in. If we change it over here, for example, ask key questions about the details in this video, it will then go through and actually show us exactly how we should be prompting this. And what I would strongly suggest that you do is go through this and learn exactly how Google likes to prompt because Obviously, if they're putting this in here, it's going to be things that are highly relevant to how it actually wants to be prompt. For example, if they have a video right here using this video, please answer the following questions. And then it can give you very direct, very straight to it answers right here. They just added this prompt gallery in. So again, I would go through, I would check this out. For example, write a Docker, set up script, and this actually goes through and literally shows you exactly how you should be prompting. And one thing that you'll notice is that Google AI Studio actually does way better with a way easier prompt. You don't have to give it as much context as you would have to give to ChatGPT, or you would have to give to Grok, or you would have to give to Gemini if you were accessing it straight from the web app. Instead, straight to the point, direct questions and answers, and that is what I really love this for. Now, the fourth and final change that we have here is if we come into chat, and I've kind of already showed this off more, but they actually added more to this, you could see that we could add in a YouTube video right here. I showed off this example before with Steve Jobs, but what you'll notice is that this was a regular YouTube video. Guess what you can now do? You can now come over here and you can grab a short and do the same exact thing. I'm gonna to try to find a short under here, Maybe I won't be able to, so I'm gonna type in AI news, and then I'm gonna put hashtag shorts so that we can actually get a short right here. Boom, I am gonna grab this, and now what we're gonna be able to do is take the URL from this, and we're gonna be able to now add this in here, and it can do the same exact thing. In the past, it actually wasn't able to do this, and I think the reason for that is because it actually has shorts in the URL right here. If we come over to a regular video like we had over here, you would see that this says watch right here. So what you used to have to do on a short was change shorts to watch, but you don't have to do that anymore now because you can literally upload just directly a YouTube video straight in here. And as you could see, this actually takes Lex tokens. So guess what? It's actually going to give you a reply way quicker when it comes to something like this. In addition to that, if you wanted to upload a video file, you'd be able to do that from your Google Drive or just click on upload file right here and you could see that you could upload any file in here. So whether it's a YouTube video or a video file or really any other type of file that you wanted to upload, you would be able to upload that into Google AI Studio and you would be able to get feedback. If we try to contrast that, if we come over to Gemini right here and say something along the lines of, can you please break down the script editing for this 
video, come over here and do this right here, what you will notice is that it actually won't be able to do this. Now this is 2.0 flash. Let's try coming into 2.5 flash and see if this can do this. Now, this can actually go through and access YouTube most of the time. So it goes through and gives us an update on the script and update on the editing. But as you can see here, it doesn't actually give us a good answer and doesn't actually give us a good answer right here. But if we come over here and we come into AI Studio, say something like, can you please break down the script and editing for this video? And then we upload the video right here. What you're going to notice is that it gives us a way better response. It is going to think for just a little bit because I have thinking mode on, but once it's done, it is actually going to give us a way better response. And this is actually the only way that you can get this to analyze videos or YouTube videos, which is a massive breakthrough because you could use this to sell consulting, to improve your content, and so many other different things here. As we could see, there's a true script breakdown and a true editing breakdown, which we weren't able to do just with regular Gemini. Now, if you're trying to figure out how you can actually automate your work with AI or start to make money with AI, I'd strongly suggest that you go to the pinned comment below and check out AI Automation School. I just launched it so I can share with you exactly how to automate your work, how to make money with AI, and you could get personalized feedback about what tools you should be using for your specific situation, or I could help you if you get stuck with anything. If that sounds interesting, please check it out at the pinned comment below. Otherwise, I would check out this video right here that walks you through the latest changes to ChatGPT that you're not going to want to miss. I'll see you over there.